Hello everyone. I welcome you all in lecture three uh, of module two, AFD, SFD, and DMD in uh, beams. So in earlier lecture we have discussed regarding uh, standard cases uh, analysis of SFD and DMD. For uh, in, in three cases we have discussed about uh, simply supported beams, and in other two cases we have discussed about cantilever beams. So in this uh, lecture, we will go through a few numerical uh, related to shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. So to start with, numerical 6 for the analysis is uh, analyze the simply supported beam as uh, shown in the figure 6 and hence draw SFD and DMD for that. And this is the diagram of the numerical. So this is the simply supported beam at uh, support A, it is subjected to a hinge support and at B it is a roller support and in between A to B there are two point loads at C the force is 37 kilo newton and at D the magnitude of force is 63 kilo newton and uh, the distances are given as uh, from A to C the distance is 2 meter from C to D it is uh, 3 meter and from D to B it is 2 meter so total distance or total span of beam is 7 meter. So as usual, we need to go for uh, calculating reactions at the supports. So we will draw a free body diagram for this uh, beam and uh, it, it will be something like this. At, at hinge support, we will be having two reaction components, uh, VA and HA. At B, as it is roller support, we will be having only one reaction uh, perpendicular to the uh, plane on which those rollers are kept. So we have VA and VB and HA. And as uh, two point loads are acting on the beam, and uh, it are, the, the, the both of them are uh, uh, vertically downward, so there is no horizontal force as such, or there is no inclined force as such, which will be having a horizontal component of it. And hence, the horizontal reaction at support A that that will be zero, or else we can write it with uh, equation of equilibrium. If we apply summation f x equal to zero. So, HA will be 0. If we apply a summation of forces in y direction equal to 0, so by considering vertical forces, we are having a vertical reaction at A, VA, a vertical reaction at B, VB. If we are assuming it initially as uh, both these reactions as upward, so VA plus VB, and uh, then two point loads one is 37 kN and another is 63 kN. So, both these are downward. So, minus uh, 37 minus 63 must be equal to 0. So, that gives us uh, equation VA plus VB is equal to 100. Now, if we consider summation of movement of forces about uh, any of the support point equal to 0, uh, let us say if, if we write uh, uh, apply a summation of M about support A equal to 0, then uh, movement uh, due to uh, force 37 kilonewton that that will be 37 into 2 and that that is clockwise so written as positive and uh, movement uh, due to 63 kilonewton point load that will be 63 into the distance in between uh, uh, support A up to D that is 5 meter so that will be 63 into 5 and uh, same is clockwise so plus and uh, due to reaction at B that is VB and if it is uh, considered as uh, upward, so that will be anticlockwise at uh, support A. So that will be VB into total distance is 7 meter. So VB into 7 that is negative. And uh, sum of this must be equal to 0. So that gives us a value of uh, reaction at B. And that calculated as uh, VB is equal to 55.57 kN. And now if we substitute this Vb is equal to 55.57 kilo newton in earlier equation where we have written as Va plus Vb is equal to 100 by summation Fy equal to 0. So if we substitute uh, this Vb in uh, earlier equation we will get Va as 100 minus uh, 55.57 and that gives 44.43 kilo newton. So with this uh, reaction calculations we can go further for the analysis of shear forces at different positions. Now try to understand in between A to C if we consider left part of the section we have uh, we are having one uh, force that is reaction at uh, support A. In between C to D if we consider a section then we'll be, uh, we are having at the left of it two different uh, loads that is one is the reaction at A 
and then at C 37 kN downward force. And if we go further in between D to B and if we consider uh, left part of that section, then uh, we will be having uh, reaction at A as well as uh, 37 kN force and the third force 63 kN force. So, uh, for the analysis, we need to consider sections in between A to say one of the section, C to D another section, D to B the third section and then we can go for the complete analysis of the structure. So, with that uh, we will uh, write first uh, part that is considering section 1 1 in between point A and uh, C at uh, distance x 1 as, as shown over here section 1 1 at uh, in between A to C at distance x 1 from A and uh, origin as A. So, x 1 when it is at A it becomes 0 and when it is at C it becomes uh, 2 meter from A to C. So, uh, the origin is A and limits are from 0 to 2 meter. So, with this if we consider uh, right part uh, sorry uh, left part of uh, the section then at the left part we are having only this reaction 44.43. So, if we consider uh, left part the equation will be SF11 equal to 44.43. Now, if we substitute uh, those uh, limits uh, as, as uh, the term x is not there in the equation. Uh, it, it will be a straight line and uh, the value of shear force at uh, A and at C at, at both these points it, it will become 44.43 kN. So, if we go further at section 2 2 and uh, still we are saying that if origin is A and uh, the section is in between C to D and uh, X 2 is the distance between uh, origin A and uh, section 2 2 and then the limit will become from uh, A to C it is 2 meter and from A to D that, that becomes uh, 5 meter. So, uh, at, at C the limit will be 2 and at T the limit will be uh, 5 from origin A. So, that is what is written over here is considering section 2 2 in between point C and D at a distance x 2 from A. So, with origin as A the limits are 2 to 5 meter. So, if we consider now section 2 2 and if we consider uh, the left part of section 2 2, we are having two different forces. One is the reaction at A and another is this 37 kN force. So, the equation becomes SF 2 2 as 44.43 and as, as we are considering left part of section, then upward will be positive and uh, downward will be negative at the left of a section. So, now the equation becomes 44.43 uh, plus and minus 37 and that will give us uh, 7.43 kN. So, again uh, if we go through this equation it is not uh, related to x or, or uh, the uh, variation of uh, shear force is uh, not there and it is constant in between C to D. Okay. So, the calculation gives us uh, shear force 2 to is 7.43 kN. And if we consider uh, point C, the shear force is uh, 7.43 kN. As well, if we consider uh, point D, shear force is 7.43 kN. So, again, uh, we will go further by considering section 3 3, how uh, we will write equation for that. If we now consider section 3 3 of uh, the beam, then uh, 3 3 is in between. Uh, point D up to point B and still if we say that origin is A and uh, distance between A to section 3 3 is uh, say x 3 then the limits will become from D to B as uh, from A to D it is 5 meter and from A to B it is 7 meter. So, the statement is uh, considering section 3 3 in between points D and B at a distance x 3 from A with origin A and uh, limits 5 to 7 meter, then the equation for shear force at uh, section 3 3 that will be if, if again we are considering uh, the left part of uh, section 3 3 and the forces acting on uh, the left part of uh, section 3 3, then 44.43 is reaction at support A minus 37 kilonewton is uh, the point load at uh, C and uh, 63 kN is point load at D. So, that becomes 44.43 uh, 
minus 37 minus 63 and that uh, calculation gives us uh, SF33 as uh, minus 55.57 kiloton. So again in this equation x term is not uh, there. So in between d to b uh, the shear force is not uh, related with uh, the position of section or uh, the variation is uh, horizontal. So if we put uh, the limits as uh, at uh, d x3 is equal to 5 meter shear force is minus 55.57 kN and at uh, B at X3 is equal to 7 meter it is uh, same SF is minus 55.57 kN. So if we draw shear force diagram now we are knowing at A it is 44.43 uh, up to C at C as there is point load there is change in the shear force at uh, C similarly from C to D it is uh, there, there is no change in the shear force at D due to 63 kiloton uh, point load there is a change in shear force and from D to B it is again a horizontal uh, straight line. So it, it will be something like this. So over here it is drawn in figure 6c as a shear force diagram. And uh, if you observe from A to D it is uh, positive and again at D uh, with, with section 2 to uh, it, it gives us 7.43 kiloton positive and uh, with uh, 463 kiloton if we go beyond D then that uh, shear force becomes negative minus 55.57 kiloton. So with, with this we will go further for uh, analysis of uh, you know, bending movement at uh, different sections. So again if we consider uh, section uh, 1 1 and uh, considering uh, the distance from A up to section 1 1 as x 1. So with origin as a the limits will become 0 to 2 meter. So with this if we consider left part of uh, section 1 1 there is only one force that is reaction at support a and movement of that uh, support a uh, reaction at support a up to section 1 1 that becomes uh, 44.43 uh, into x 1 is the distance between these two. So if we now put those limits at, at point A x1 is 0, so bending moment is 0 and at 2 meter x1 is equal to 2 meter that is at point C that gives us uh, calculation as 88.86 uh, kN meter. So if this, this is uh, what is about uh, section 1 1 from A to C. Now if we go beyond C up to uh, point C and uh, D then uh, that, that section 2 2. Uh, we will be having uh, equation as uh, bending moment 2 2 equal to if we consider left part of uh, section 2 2 and now we have two forces uh, on the left part of section 2 2. So that will become 44.43 into x2 that that, that is uh, from, from this 44.43 is reaction at A from this up to section 2 2. So that will be 44.43 into x2 and then 37 kN force that that force is acting at C. Now uh, section 2 2 is uh, in between C to D. Uh, so at, at uh, C the distance between C to section that that is required to be uh, multiplied by. So what what it will be from A up to section 2 2 uh, the distance is x2 and from A up to point C distance is 2 meter. So remaining distance from uh, point C up to section 2 2 it will be x2 minus 2. So movement of 37 kilonewton force up to section 2 2 will become 37 multiplied by x2 minus 2 meter. So that, that is the distance between C to section 2 2. So that gives us the equation for bending movement 2 2 if we consider left part of uh, section 2 2. Now if we put the limits at, at point C. Uh, the distance x2 becomes 2 meter. So that gives us uh, the value of bending moment at uh, C as 88.86 kN meter and at uh, D if we put uh, the limit x2 as uh, 5 meter it, it gives us uh, bending moment as 111.15 uh, kN meter. So with, with these two values if we go further in between uh, D to B then uh, with uh, section 3.3 still origin is A and uh, distance from A up to section 3 3 if we now uh, consider it as uh, x3 over here from uh, point A up to section 3 3 if we consider that distance as x3 
and in between D to B, we are considering section 33. So, at D, that uh, limit becomes uh, 5 meter and at B, that limit becomes 7 meter. So, uh, origin A, uh, section X, uh, uh, section 33 with X3 distance from A. So, limit uh, up to D becomes 5 and uh, at B, it becomes 7 meter. So, if we now consider section 33 and uh, left part of it, then we have three forces acting in between. So, what, what equation will be? Now, 44.43 is reaction at A and movement of that up to section 33 will become 44.43 multiplied with this distance x3. So, 44.43 into x3 is first term. Second term is related to movement due to 37 kilonewton uh, force. And now that distance, see from uh, support A up to section 33 distance is x3 and from support A up to point C distance is 2 meter. So, remaining distance from uh, point C where that 37 kilonewton force is acting and uh, section 33 will become x3 minus 2. So, now that movement will be 37 into x3 minus 2 and movement due to 63 kilonewton point load. That will be uh, the force 63 kilonewton and the distance between point D up to section 33. So, that will be x3 minus distance between A up to D that is 5 meter. So, that will become x3 minus 2, uh, 5. So, with this, if we put the limits as uh, at D, x3 is 5 meter and at uh, B, x3 is 7 meter. So, we can calculate what is the bending movement at D. That is again uh, 111.15 kN meter. And at uh, B, if we put uh, x3 as 7 meter in the equation of BM33, that bending movement uh, comes out to be 0. Now, uh, what what happens is uh, with with uh, at at end of the support in case of simply supported beam the calculations will give you something 0 0.02 0 0.04 or something like that actually it is uh, zero okay so now if we draw a bending movement diagram it it will be something like this now what we have calculated is bending movement at a is uh, zero at b it is uh, zero at C it is 88.86 and the same value with uh, two equations, the M11 equation it gives uh, bending movement at C as 88.86 and uh, uh, with, with second equation also it is same and uh, with second equation at point D it is uh, 111.15 and with uh, bending movement 3-3 three, three equation again uh, that calculation is same. So, at, at D it is 111.15 uh, one meter and uh, now we are aware that in case of uh, simply supported beam, uh, then uh, it, uh, that uh, force, if it is downward, it will be is, uh, it will be creating uh, a sagging bending movement, and that bending movement will be positive throughout. And then, if we go through all these three equations, BM11, BM22, BM33. Now here x term is there, but power of x is one, so it, it will be inclined straight line. So, the variation in between A to C or C to D or D to B everywhere it is uh, inclined variation. Okay. So, with this now we will go through one more numerical in uh, next uh, this thing. So, uh, numerical 7 and uh, statement of the numerical is uh, analysis of uh, the cantilever beam as uh, shown in this figure 11a. And uh, it, it is uh, something like uh, it, is, it is fixed at A, uh, P at uh, B, and uh, in between we have different forces. Like uh, at free end, uh, it is subjected to point load 48 kilonewton. At uh, D, in between A to B, at uh, 2 meter from B, it is subjected to one more uh, point load, it is 32 kilonewton. And then uh, in between A to C, it, it is uh, subjected to uh, uniformly distributed load, 16 kilonewton per meter. So, for this, again, uh, as as discussed, uh, you, you can consider different sections and consider left part of a section, uh, whatsoever the force is acting on it, for uh, calculating shear force or bending movement. But, uh, in, in case of cantilever, if we uh, consider a section and right part of the section, then it is, it is free end. So, there is no reaction on, on that side and then uh, we need not uh, go for analysis of reactions, we can directly go for uh, analysis of shear force and bending movement if we are considering different sections 
and if we are considering the right part of the section. So that is what is uh, written over here in uh, this statement, develop and uh, draw free body diagram as shown in figure 11b. So it, it is something like this and uh, in, in case of cantilever beam, do not waste time on calculating reactions, consider sections from a free end. So what, what is shown over here is section 1 1 and uh, origin is B that is free end and uh, distance of section 1 1 from B is X1 or section 2 2 uh, again origin is free end. So we will we'll be going uh, from free end up to sections okay? in, in case of cantilever beam. So, uh, calculations of shear force will be something like this. So, considering this section 1 1 as discussed uh, with uh, in, in between B to D because uh, if, if I am considering section 1 1 and uh, in, in between B to D, we have this force 48 kilonewton at the right part of it. But if we go beyond D and if we consider a section, we have two forces. Uh, this at, at B one force is there and at D there is another force. So, in between B to D we need to consider one section and in between D to C again we need to consider some section because beyond C uh, up to A we have some UDA. In between C to D there is there are just two forces 32 and 48. So, uh, we will be first of all going through section 1 1. So, if it is in between B to D the limits will become uh, 0 to uh, 2 meter. And then, uh, if we consider right part of that uh, section, then we have just 48 kN force. And uh, this is uh, what we have discussed in uh, sign conventions. If, if we are considering uh, section, left part of it, upward will be positive. And uh, uh, if, if I am considering right part of the section, downward will be positive. So, equation will become SF11 is equal to 48. So, it is algebraic sum of uh, forces, either at the left or right of uh, that particular section. So, with this, if we consider uh, the limit x is equal to 0, at, at point B, shear force is 48 kN, at the point D, again at x is equal to 2 meter, it will be same. Uh, if, if we go further and if we consider section 2, 2, then in between uh, point D and C, at uh, distance x2 from B, with uh, origin as uh, B, and uh, now limits from D to C, we are considering this section. So, B to D the distance is 2 meter and from B to C the distance is 4 meter. So, in between D to C we are considering section 2 2. So, X2 is applicable from D to C and then it becomes 2 meter to 4 meter. So, if we are considering now SF22 and uh, what, what are the forces acting on right part of it. So, we have two forces 48 kN and 32 kN. And just we are uh, taking sum of it, algebraic sum of that. So that that will give us uh, 80 kN. And uh, in this equation again, x term is not there. So at D, uh, the shear force becomes uh, 80 kN. And uh, at uh, C, at uh, 4 meter, again shear force is 48 kN. So if we go further beyond uh, point C, considering section 3.3, in between point C up to point A and still if we say uh, the origin is B over here and the section is at a distance X3. If we consider this section, the section is uh, at a distance X3. So, the limit uh, of uh, section 3.3 will become uh, from B up to C, X3 will become uh, 4 meter and uh, if we consider section 3.3 at A. So, that, that uh, will become from B to A, then X3 will become uh, 6 meter. So, that, that is what is written over here considering section 3.3 in between point uh, C and A at distance X3 from uh, B with origin as B and uh, limits X to 6 meter. Now, if we take uh, the shear force at section 3.3 by considering uh, the forces acting at right part of it, then that will give us SF33. So, first force is 48 kN uh, downward positive, then 32 kN uh, downward, and uh, plus uh, 16 kN per meter uniformly distributed load uh, in between point C up to section 33. So, up to section 33, distance from B is uh, considered as X3, and from B to C, 
the distance is 4 meter. So, distance between the C up to section 33 will be X3 minus 4. So, UDL, uh, if, if we consider it as a total force due to that UDL acting on X3 minus 4 distance, so that will be 16 multiplied by that distance. So, equation becomes SF33 is equal to 48 plus 32 plus uh, 16 multiplied with X3 minus 4. And then the equation, if we substitute X3 as 4 meter, then uh, the shear force value is 80 kiloton uh, at, at point C. And uh, if we substitute X3 as uh, 6 meter, so it will give us a shear force at uh, point A. So at point A, by substituting uh, X3 as uh, 6 meter, uh, shear force becomes 112 kilonewton. So, if, if we go through these equations, SF11 is with 48, there is no X term, in, in SF22 again it is 80 kiloton uh, and uh, there is no X term. So, in between uh, B to D and uh, D to C, that, that uh, is horizontal line uh, or uh, the variation is not there in the shear force. And from C up to A, if we consider this SF33 equation, X term is there. And then there will be uh, change in the value of uh, shear force from C to A, okay, or there is variation of shear force. So, if we draw uh, the shear force diagram, shear force diagram will be something like this. Now, everywhere shear force is uh, positive and uh, at, at B it is uh, 48 kilonewton, at D with uh, first equation it is 48, with second equation it is 80 kilonewton. So, it, it is due to that uh, point load acting at that uh, position and again uh, in, in between D to C it is horizontal, at C it is 80 kN with uh, second as well as third equation and at A it is 112 kN and it, the, there is a variation which is uh, uh, with the power of X as 1, so that is inclined uh, straight line. So, this, this is a shear force diagram uh, for the given uh, beam. Now, if we go for analysis of uh, bending movement at uh, different uh, cross sections, the statement for considering section 11 in uh, between points B and D, what we have earlier uh, discussed in case of uh, shear force calculations. So, with uh, limits at 0 to 2 meter and again we are considering the right part of uh, section 11. So, equation for bending movement at uh, section 11 due to this uh, 48 kN force that will be just 48 into x1 that is distance between uh, point B up to section 11. So, if, if we uh, now we, we are aware that uh, the uh, bending moment uh, due to uh, the forces on uh, cantilever beam that, that uh, is creating hogging bending moment and that will be negative. So, that is minus 48 x1. Now, if we put limits at, at B x1 is 0 and at D x1 is 2 meter. So, if we put those limits, we will get uh, at B bending movement as a 0 and at D bending movement as minus 96 kilonewton meter. Similarly, if we consider section 2 2 and uh, at distance x2 from uh, B as origin and in between uh, D to C, so that uh, limits will become 2 meter to 4 meter and uh, then if we consider right part of section 2 2, there are two forces, uh, 48 kilonewton as well as 32 kilonewton. And now we need to consider movement due to these two forces. So, the equation for bending movement at section 2 2 that becomes for first force 48 kilonewton, the distance between section 2 2 and uh, that 48 kilonewton force is x2, and uh, 32 kilonewton is acting at uh, point D, and uh, x2 is distance from uh, B up to section. So, distance between D to section 2, 2 is x2 minus 2. So, that uh, movement will become 32 multiplied with x2 minus 2. So, if we now put limits for uh, x2, at, at D it is uh, 2 meter and at C it is uh, 4 meter. So, at, at point D it gives uh, bending movement as minus 96 kiloton meter with uh, substituting x2 as 2 meter and if we substitute x2 as 4 meter at, at point C, bending moment value becomes minus 256 kilonewton meter. Now, we will further go through section 33 in between point C up to support A. 
So again we are saying that origin is B and uh, distance between B up to section 33 is X3 and uh, at C that X3 becomes uh, 4 meter and at A that X3 becomes uh, 6 meter. So with this if we write the equation we will be uh, considering the right part again. So 48 multiplied by X3 will be movement of 48 kiloton uh, which is acting at B up to section 33 and then movement due to 32 kiloton which is acting at D up to section 33 that will be uh, 32 multiplied with distance from D up to section 33. So from B up to section 33 it is X3 and from B up to D that is uh, 2 meter from D to D over here this, this is 2 meter and from B to uh, section 33 uh, this distance is X3. So distance between D and uh, 33 that becomes X3 minus 2. So 32 into X3 minus 2. And uh, for UDL uh, from C up to section 33 that will be 16 kiloton per meter and distance between C and uh, section 33. So that is X3 minus 4. X3 is distance between B to section 33 and 4 is distance from B up to C. So this distance from C up to section 33 it becomes X3 minus 4. So 16 into X3 minus 4 will be total uh, force due to UDL in between C up to section 33 and center of that will be X3 minus 4 divided by 2. So movement due to that UDL uh, in between C to uh, section 33 up to section 33 will be 16 into X3 minus 4 into X3 minus 4 divided by 2. So that is uh, directly written as 16 into X3 minus 4 square divided by 2. And now if we put limits as X3 is equal to 4 meter and X3 is equal to 6 meter, the value of uh, bending moment at uh, point C that, that uh, comes out to be 256 kilodon meter and at point A that value comes as uh, with X3 is equal to 6 meter if we substitute it. Uh, it, it gives a bending moment at A as uh, minus 448 kilonewton meter. So now uh, with these uh, values we are aware about uh, at point B and at point D it is 0, minus 96 uh, and uh, uh, again minus 256 and minus 448. So if we draw that and uh, how to uh, draw that graph is from B to D with section 1 1 that, that will be inclined straight line from D to C that variation will be again inclined straight line and in between C to A that is UDL and if we go through this equation here it is uh, square. So that is second order parabola. So from C to A that is uh, parabolic variation of bending moment and everywhere from B to A that uh, bending moment uh, caused due to uh, the forces uh, in, in case of cantilever it is uh, a hogging type of bending moment. So that will be negative throughout and that is what is bending moment diagram is drawn in this figure, figure 11D. With this we will go through a few theoretical uh, discussions in uh, this particular lecture and uh, what we are going to discuss is about what is the relationship between load, uh, shear force and bending moment. Load, uh, what, what we mean by the externally applied forces and the shear force getting developed at a particular position and bending moment at a, at a particular section. So that, that relation we are going to discuss in this particular lecture. So uh, let, let us go through this diagram and what this diagram is uh, giving us is uh, consider a cut of length dx. So say for example there is a, a, a beam in which from origin or from one of the support, end support, uh, a, a section is considered at a distance x, okay. And uh, again one more section is considered at a distance dx from earlier section. So what is said is consider a cut of length dx of loading beam at a distance x from origin a. So as, as shown in this figure, if, if w is the mean rate of loading, it, it may be a uh, uniformly distributed load or uniformly varying load or there may be few point loads in between. So what is said uh, while writing this statement is 
if W is mean rate of loading and F and M are shear force and bending moment at section X. So, what is shown over here? This is value of shear force F and this is value of bending moment M at, at this particular section. And after that, at a dx distance apart, now what we have discussed up till now in various numerical that uh, there will be some variation in uh, shear force and bending moment if we go from one point to another point or one section to another section. So, if we consider the next section at a dx distance apart, the value will be it, it may increase or it may decrease. So, while uh, discussion it is written as f plus df and m plus dm. That, that is shear force and bending moment at section x plus a dx. So, from origin the distance of another section will be x plus a dx. If this is the case, then if with a diagram drawn, what we can discuss further is, for equilibrium of vertical forces, for elemental uh, member dx, so in, in between whatsoever this portion is considered, for this member, uh, which has uh, dimension dx and whatsoever cross section of beam is. So, if, if we go for equilibrium of vertical forces, what, what vertical forces we have is at, at first section it is F, then in between two sections we have UDL, say uh, mean uh, rate of loading if it is W, then W acting over dx length, so W into dx is its uh, force, so that is downward are considered negative and uh, similarly at another section vertical force is f plus df and if it is downward then again it is written as minus. So, if, if we uh, for, for equilibrium of each part it, it must also be in equilibrium. So, algebraic sum of this must be equal to 0. So, f is force over here w into dx is the externally applied force over dx distance and f minus df is shear force at dx distance apart. So, this equation must be equal to 0. So, if, if we uh, write it, rewrite it, so what, what it gives? W that, that this F and this minus F, it, it gets cancelled and W becomes DF divided by DX. And what, what we can say with this? Thus, the rate of change of shear force, what, what is DF uh, is the either increase or decrease in the uh, value of shear force. And if it is over dx distance apart, so df by dx is giving us uh, the rate of change of shear force or slope of shear force curve, shear force diagram is equal to the intensity of loading. So this is the relationship uh, in between load and shear force. So again what we, are, we have written is W is equal to df by dx or rate of change of shear force uh, is equal to the intensity of loading. Now, with this if we go further, taking moment of forces about C. So, if, if we are saying that this C is at center of this dx, okay, then this becomes dx divided by 2, this part becomes dx divided by 2. And if we now take moment of all the forces about uh, C point, so we have this moment M at this uh, earlier section, okay. So, that, that itself is a moment, no need to multiply it with uh, distance and uh, shear force is there, F. Moment due to shear force will become F into dx divided by 2, if, if C is at center of this. So, this distance will be dx divided by 2. So, that is moment due to F. And uh, due to W, now W if we convert it into point load, that will be through C itself. So, moment of that will be 0. So, no, no, it is not uh, written over or considered. So, due to uh, the shear force at another uh, section F plus DF, then again that will be F plus DF multiplied with the distance. Now, that is again DX divided by 2. And both these are clockwise. So, F plus uh, sorry F into DX divided by 2 and F plus DF multiplied with DX divided by 2, both terms are positive. And the another is uh, moment M plus uh, DM. Now, try to understand when, when we are saying that uh, if, if it is sagging or hugging, now sagging uh, will be uh, trying to create uh, the tension at uh, uh, 
bottom and compression at the top. Uh, so, these two movements together, they are trying to uh, bend it in such a way that uh, say uh, sagging bending movement is uh, taking place. Okay. So, that, that uh, the another movement m plus dm on the other side that will be uh, in another direction. So, if we uh, have sum of this and if we equate it to 0, then what is written is neglecting products and uh, squares of small quantities. So, what, what we have m over here plus f dx divided by 2 plus over here what will happen is f multiplied with this dx divided by 2. So, f into dx divided by 2 first part and second part f into dx divided by 2. This gives us f dx. Okay. Then we have uh, df into dx divided by 2. So, df is small and dx is uh, small value. So, multiplication of this is uh, neglected and uh, then we have over here minus m and minus dm. So, this minus m and this m that, that, that is cancelled. So, f dx is one term remaining and dm term is remaining. So, what, what we can write is if we take dm on this side, then f will be dm divided by dx. So, with this what we can write is the rate of change of bending moment is equal to the shear force. So, this earlier earlier uh, statement was w is equal to df divided by dx and now the another is f is equal to dm divided by dx. So, with the second equation what we have written is f is equal to dm by dx. Suppose, if uh, at, a, at a particular point where dm by dx is equal to 0. So, that, that gives us shear force is 0. So, what is actually meaning of it is dm by dx is equal to 0 means there is no uh, rate of change of shear force. Or if we draw at that particular point on uh, shear, uh, sorry, uh, on bending moment diagram, uh, a tangent at, at that particular position, then that will be horizontal. So what that uh, says is when dm by dx is equal to zero, the bending moment will have the maximum value. So that that gives us two different uh, things. That if dm by dx is equal to zero, shear force is zero and the bending moment at that particular position is maximum. So, we, we are knowing how to draw or how to develop a shear force uh, diagram and we are knowing that uh, at, at uh, different uh, points shear force value may be uh, 0 or it, it may be uh, moving from positive to negative. So, at, at that particular position if we calculate at, at what uh, point from a particular uh, origin it, it is 0 uh, then at that particular point if we substitute those values in the equations of bending moment, then we will be uh, in position to calculate what is bending moment at, at that point and uh, what is its value which is uh, maximum value of the bending moment. So, one more uh, discussion is the point of zero bending moment. So, m is equal to zero. What it gives us is the type of bending changes from sagging to hogging or hogging to sagging something like that. So, that that kind of uh, point is termed as point of inflection or point of contraflexion. Generally, we call it as point of contraflexion. So, the point where bending moment is changing its uh, uh, sagging to hogging or hogging to sagging its nature that that is a point of contraflexion. In, in case of a simply supported beam, uh, bending moment at supports uh, will be 0. So, this uh, one of the numerical we have done earlier and uh, we see that uh, at, at uh, two supports the bending moment was 0. And in case of cantilever uh, at, at free end uh, whatsoever numerical we have uh, done, uh, the at, at free end bending moment was 0. But this is not referred as a point of contraflexion. So, what we have discussed earlier is the point of contraflexion is a point at, at which the bending moment is changing either from positive to negative or negative to positive or say sagging to hugging or hugging to sagging and that point is called as point of contraflexion. So, integrating equation 8. So, what, what that equation was w is equal to df by dx. 
So rate of change of shear force gives uh, the uh, magnitude of loading. So if, if uh, in between two sections, say A and B, at x distance apart, if, if we integrate it, then Fa minus Fb gives us integral W dx. So uh, the variation of a shear force between two sections is the area under the load distribution diagram. And, and uh, similarly, integrating equation B. So in equation B, what we have written is F is equal to dm by dx. And if again, if we consider in between two sections A and B, then ma minus md that will be integral f dx k so the variation of bending moment between two sections so it, it is equal to the area under shear force diagram so in general f is equal to dm by dx that is uh, dm by dx gives us uh, the shear force and uh, df by dx gives us uh, intensity of loading and uh, again df uh, the, the dm by dx is f so df by dx is uh, d2m by dx square so d2m by dx square is the relation between uh, load and the uh, bending moment so with this discussion we will conclude uh, this lecture i am uh, thankful to you all for uh, the lecture thanks